Good evening. I'm Father Russ Carmichael, and this is Street Talk. I want to thank all my viewers for tuning in. You people are so wonderful, okay? I got a great show for you tonight. I got a great guest, okay? Dominic Cotton, my co-host, is so good. He's been so good getting really good people <laughs> over the last year and a half. People who wouldn't normally talk to Father, but uh, <laughs> come in because of Dominic. I do, before I start, though, I do need to say to, hello to all the postal workers here in New London. I love you guys. I want to thank you for the 14 years of service that you've given me in New London. Bob, okay, I know you watch all the time, and, and, and the ladies down there, you people are wonderful, uh, okay? Uh, I, I should tell everybody uh, the story about the Pope, how uh, you all said, he's got to be a Roman Catholic who, priest because the Vatican sent stuff to the post office <laughs> addressed to me. <laughs> well, we never know. Uh, okay. Uh, but I do want to say thank you to all you guys. Uh, okay. And to everybody out there. Prayers, uh, uh, prayers go out uh, to all our folks that are sick and under the weather. Uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby Burlon, uh, who's usually with us and works with us on the show, is uh, down at Yale and hope he gets home quick. Mm. Okay, uh, and finally, I want to congratulate all the new Londoners for the new mayor, Michael Passeroy. You know we love you, Michael. We all thank you. And to all the Democrats, you all rocked, and bless you, Peg Curtin, and, and the whole Board of Education. I think we, we wiped out the city except for one uh, person on the Green Party, on the board of Ev, and that's uh, Myrna, Martin. Myrna Martin. Martin. Right, right, right. No. Yeah, so, so Democrats, guess what? Took the city back all the way. God bless you. Well, right now, talking about guys and people on my show, okay? I got a guy I couldn't get on six, seven years ago. He was always busy. <laughs> I, have, Sorry, I, have, I have Jim Amons, former Speaker yes. of the House. Uh, okay. Uh, um, so, uh, actually, what are the, uh, that Speaker Emerit, right? Emeritus, uh, yes, Emeritus, correct. Right, correct. right. Uh, former Speaker of the House right. of Connecticut. Jim. Great to see you. Great to see you. Yeah, it's great. Uh, officially, right? Yeah, nice to be back in the studio. Back in the studio. Right. It's been, been years, Long time. right? Last time I was seeing you, I did see you in the studio with Murray, but Correct. it was down the State House. Correct. I was probably banging stuff in the other <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Most likely. He probably, had, he probably had a line of when, convicts when, up when, high. Sure. Yeah, it scares yeah, the hell out of people. Always, we fill up that. We fill those rooms up with convicts yeah. and bad guys and stuff like that. It's no different than a normal day at the yeah, Capitol. Yeah, exact, exactly <laughs> right. right. I, but you're doing, you're doing a lot of stuff. Yes. Okay. okay? Yes. Uh, and, and, and Dominic... Dominic got you up here because he wanted to pick your brains. Good. You know, Good. about the real right. politics. Great, right. great. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, and and uh, a little later on, I want to talk about your business. Good, wonderful, uh, uh, thank uh, you. Okay. But I know Dominic, because uh, I kind of know what happens in the norms. Being, yes. being brought up in a political yeah. family, yes. having uh, cousins uh, that both were. Uh, State Auditors of Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, my brother was the uh, chief investigator for the state auditor and now is a sheriff of Middlesex County. Uh, I worked for Governor Sargent, Republican governor, right, uh, right out of prison, too, mm -hmm. uh, in the 70s. Uh, and Bill Bolger, at that time, uh, of the brother of the famous uh, yes. Jimmy Bolger, was uh, Speaker of the House yes. and was a personal friend. and, and, and uh, all around nice guy. Believe Absol it or not, believe absolutely. Not, Billy Bolger is no crook. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, I've known Billy a long, 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 long time. Whitey is a damn crook, and was a damn crook, and been a damn crook. But Billy, no yeah. way. You know, he was a wonderful speaker of the house. Yes. Cared about all his people. Cared about all his uh, constituency. And he was a great uh, leader at the University of Massachusetts yes. too. Should have never lost his job. 
But anyways, I'll leave that alone. But I know a little bit about, you know. But Dominic, <laughs> Dominic's learning. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I came around to this late in life. I mean, I just became mm -hmm. a citizen actually back in July. Yeah, I that's awesome. It. So, that's uh, great. This is, this is my first vote around. Um, and I know in the back of my head, I was probably about the time that we, we were dealing with a lot of our issues up in, up in uh, Hartford over brain injury mm -hmm. um, about a couple years ago. In the back of my head, I had it to call you at some point because I, I wanted to figure out how to, uh, to lobby or get right. the, the attention. Of course, I ran into this guy. <laughs> 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 and we, 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 we did a lot of uh, uh, fun stuff within that. Um, but one thing I, I, I guess I, I always, uh, I guess, mystified me is that on, on issues that are, are, that are so, seem so plain, how many different players that there are, like, really, mm -hmm. you know, coming from all different ends of things, and how many, how, how, um, I guess you know uh, the, the the speaker's office um, and and the pro temp and the governor mm -hmm. all end up together on sometimes I don't know it's like a collision course I call it pretty much yeah you know bet between it and and I and I, I see that quite a bit I mean right at the moment obviously um, we 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 were wishing that you were going to be governor back in two thousand and ten I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there's probably quite quite a number of people who, uh, who, who feel the same way, uh, especially in the, in the difficult circumstances. But what, what's it really like to be in the speaker's position? Well, first of all, it, it's, it's, it's an honor. Quite frankly, it was, it's, it was pretty amazing. I remember in 2005, you know, to stand up there and actually have the gavel handed to you uh, by the former speaker, Mora Lyons. It's, uh, it's an amazing, it's an amazing day because, if you don't mind, I'll start your first day as a, as a legislator, okay? You know, when you go into the state capitol and you walk in as a freshman and you sit down, I'll never forget the day. It's exciting because you're with your family and, um, but when you sit at your seat with your name on it and you sit in that historic chamber, it's an awesome responsibility and it's, uh, and, um, beyond that, it's, it's just an honor to be able to represent your constituents. And I remember Speaker Balducci was up there, and I was looking at him like, how did he ever become Speaker of the House? You know, I was in awe. And I can tell you, gentlemen, if you were to ask me, first term, second term, third term, fourth term or fifth term as a state legislator, if I'd be speaker someday, I'd say, what are you, crazy? So you never know. You never know. You never know how things go and how they happen. So from that moment to, to be speaker of the House, it is a different position. I was majority leader too. I was a chairman. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Dominic, I thought I knew a lot when I was a freshman. I thought I learned a lot. I thought I knew pretty much everything until I became an assistant leader. And then your leaders over here said, nope, that's not how it's really done. <laughs> Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> so now you're like, okay, I didn't know that. So now the next year, you're a chairman of a committee. And you think you know pretty much how things get done. And when you're a chairman, you find out, I didn't know that how that got done. And so on and so on and so on. Every level of leadership, there are these ways of what you do know and how things really happen. So when you get to the speaker's position, you know pretty much the whole, all the secrets where all the skeletons are buried. You know how to deal with the governor, why you're dealing with governor, because your other speakers before you tell you. Your other majority leaders tell you what's going on. So you, you, by the time you reach that position and you, you go out and talk to people that, you know, had the power before you and you know, don't be arrogant to think you know it all because believe me, you don't. Um, listen to people that you respect and then remember why you're there. That's the most important thing. 
And I was very lucky. I had, I had a few good speakers. And I'm not going to name names. I have a couple. I, most of my speakers were great. One of them I wasn't that keen on. I won't uh, want to insult anybody. But my point is, if your speaker is there, is now your new constituency as a speaker is, is your caucus. Of course, you can't forget about your hometown. But your first obligation is that caucus. And, what, and not just the caucus, but as a speaker, actually the whole chamber. You've got the whole, the whole chamber. chamber. Right, right. You're responsible your for that chamber. Your role is different. Your role is different. Right. Respect for everybody. Listen to people. Don't think you know it all. Um, but also in that position, you have the power to influence because you've earned that spot to tell your fellow legislators how and why we should be going a certain route. All right, so when I first got to the caucus, the first thing I let everybody know when I became speaker was that they are now my constituents. I am there to make them look good. I would never do anything to put them in harm's way. If there are problems they have, remember, number one rule family. I've seen too many families up here. People destroy their families because of drinking, partying, um, affairs. And I understand we're all human and we all fall. But what I'm trying to tell you is don't forget why you came here. Don't forget your family. You get under this gold dome and it's like we're in our own world. Mm -hmm and that everybody's paying attention to us. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're home with their families, right. trying to pay bills. Mm -hmm. So that's what you should be doing. When, you, when we're done here at night, I promise you one thing. I'm going to try to get you home at a decent hour. Because before that, 3, 4, 5 in the morning, we're what's used to, which used to happen a lot. So that's number one. My job was to protect them, make them look good, not, not to do anything that's embarrassing. And most important, get them reelected. Re -elected reelected. It wasn't about me. And when a speaker, when it's about them, that's a leader you need to get rid of. Um, with that, you earn your respect. So then we'll get into the real teeth. Yeah. That's kind of the speech. <laughs> then we'll get into the nitty gritty. And, and, and the nitty gritty is problems come up. And, and, and you get you got problems and you got to deal with them. Okay, and there's a, a good speaker, one, one will deal with it, say, in the back room. People like don't like that thing, but the fact of the matter is, there's a need for the back room. You're darn right, and I have to mention this, and I'm not playing any political who I want for president, but but Senator Rubio said something the other day that disturbed me. He said, "Hey, I'm running for president. It doesn't matter if I'm not showing up for votes." Oh, oh, oh yes, it does. oh yes, it does. Oh, yeah, it certainly does. <laughs> you are not elected as senator to run for president to run for president that's right if you decide to run for president that's okay you have the right to do but you have to remember your constituents and why you're there and that is so important so um, when you get into a big issue let's say the budget um, the gun issues um, death penalty all the bigger the big oh, ones yeah, the even ones that aren't as big, but to some constituencies, such as helmet laws for motorcycle riders. Mm -hmm. Those very, very div divisive issues. Um, you need the thing that happens in the back room, and this is what I was saying going with Rubio. Rubio's influence, oh, I know what he said. He said, it doesn't matter, because by the time I get on the floor to do that vote, it's already, well, thank you, Senator Rubio. That's the way the world works in politics. You're darn right. Yeah. By the time you go on that floor, it's all over. It's all over because yeah. as a speaker, remember what I told you. <laughs> exactly. Rule one, I will never embarrass you. You're never going to put a vote up there, okay, that's going to get you in trouble in your district. And if I know it's going to get you, Father, or you, Dominic, uh, getting thrown out of office, I say, Dom, I've got 98 votes. I only need 70, 71. Take a walk on this. So when I mean by walk, I don't like people to take a walk. Vote no. Yep. If it's if it's not if it and I so that was another thing. Yeah. Count your votes. Count your votes. Know where you're at right. and do that. So 
And when you go in that back room, the first thing you do is, okay, guys, here's the issue as I see it. And I lay it out. Now let's have a discussion. And I don't care how long it takes. And these caucuses can go on for hours and hours. But there used to be a speaker that would cut you off. Two speakers that I know of would cut off discussion, caucus. That's when you cause rebellion. Because they're going to get really mad at yeah. you yeah. after a while that you're not letting them express. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that I, speakers that I learned from, allowed everybody to speak. He said, we're a family in here. We're a team in here. And you have to allow everybody in respect. Now, if you want to disagree, this is the place to do it. You want to have a fight? You want to push each other yeah. around? OK, we're going to break it up. But everything happens here. You don't bring it in front of a camera. and You don't do it on the floor of the house. It's in this room. It's like a family table. There's going to be arguments. There's going to be disagreement. But at the end of the day, we're walking out as a family. And the most important thing, keep your mouth shut. You don't talk about what happened in the caucus. OK? Because once you leak that out to other people, you're going you're gonna to dissolve as, as a strong caucus. So that's part of it. And then when all that fighting is done, all that disagreement, all those horrible things that are, may or may not be said about each other, OK? Which is, because yeah. it can get brutal it in there. It can get brutal, right? And um, you let it go to a point where you don't want to get fist fights, but you let, you let people go. Because I found out it's like almost like being a good psychiatrist. When you're up there for so long, away from your family, fighting these issues, by the time you get into these caucuses, mm -hmm. session is halfway over, and you're tired already. And you get frustrated. And you're mad because you're fighting for that kid at home that needs a wheelchair. And you just found out in the budget, Mr. Speaker, you know, you went up there with Don Williams and with Governor Rell, mm -hmm. and you come back to me and tell me, I'm going to support this budget when you cut out my constituent that you know, needs this money to survive. You're right, OK? Next, we're going to listen. And we debate it. But then you explain that we have to make some very horrific choices sometimes. We really do. And this is why we need to do it now. This is now. And I have to try to convince them that this is the proper budget to support. Now, they'll say, we are not supporting Mr. Speaker unless you change these seven items. You don't change those seven items. You can tell Don Williams, and Don obviously says the same thing to me, mm -hmm. uh, and the governor, that we're not having a budget this year. And that's good for me, because now, especially because we have the votes, right, the Democrats. And when I was out there, we had 114. We took a 92 Democratic caucus, it brought up to 114 when I left. It was the biggest Democratic caucus since uh, Nixon, uh, since Nixon was thrown out. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's got dwindled down to 87 or something at this point. But we built that up to 114. So I could lose, I could lose 20 votes at a time. I could lose 25 votes and still win. It was good for me. I was in, it allowed us to do a lot of things and not hurt a lot of people. Because then Dominic can stand up, OK, knowing that he didn't get his piece in there. And Dominic says, Mr. Speaker, you know I got to get on the floor. And I said, Dom, you're OK, OK? And you let the person speak on the floor and put his passion and put his vote up there that he's against it. Now, what happens, though, if we got a vote? And I know it's a close vote. And I've told my guys this all the time. I would never, ever ask for your vote unless I desperately needed it. I would never put you to put a cream or a no up there um, that I know that could hurt you unless I desperately needed you. And there were a few occasions. We're up there, and I'm looking at the board, and our count was three votes off. And I'm saying, how the hell? Did that happen? I counted in there, 
and I see three names up there that I know told me they were loan for me. Right? So I, this, is the, this is the fun part, though. You committed to me in caucus. You make your commitment. You don't back off your commitment. That, that's sacrilegious. So now I see Tom's got a no vote up there. So you see, you have these guys on the side, and you wonder what they do all day. Your, your aides, your assistants, and you see the speaker pick up the phone. And sometimes you'll see the majority leader answer the phone. Because when I was majority leader, my job and the majority leader's job, he's the general. He's the general. You're the court, you're the quarterback, like send he's the, everything he's set up. The, right, he's the general down there. And he's got to make sure that the votes we add, so I say, um, Mr. Majority Leader, would you go ask Tom what the hell he's doing? And you keep the vote open. That's the other thing, too. We have a vote board here. Mm -hmm. We know how everybody's voting. A lot of people don't. It takes a few years for people to realize. How does the speaker have a new office? How does he keep I've been in the chamber. <laughs> I, 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 I see, I see I, it. And I, and you'd I, be amazed how many people don't know. You didn't know it for years. Oh, and I, and I go there was back, a board up there. I go back and I look at, uh, at, at some of the votes that have been out there. Oh, yeah. And I, I know a lot of the people that are involved in it, and right. I can see right. where they are in the position where, right. yeah, they need to, to, to vote no if it's a, like a tough Correct. on crime type Correct. thing. Correct. And like our our Our, our situation, came, came this up. is what we were trying and, to and, and we I was out. trying to teach them fast politics, and they didn't right. want to listen. I said, look, this is compromise. This is what you got to do. This this is otherwise you shouldn't be in the game. Correct. If you don't think that you 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 sometimes are going to vote on things you don't like, right. you have to do that because you may get something that you Correct. need down the road. Correct. If you can't play that and you can't deal with that in that game, then you need to get out. Correct. Uh, okay, because that, that's the reality. Correct. Uh, of what, so we were trying to. Uh, well, I know that last time around, uh, when they were, they wanted to make changes to, to our program. To our ABI and, program. And, you know, we I actually went through the process. I called up CM, CMS and asked them about the yeah. role and, yeah, and yeah. followed up and did, did all this I'm stuff. I'm in the middle of a CMS right now with Rosa DeLauro, by the way. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yes. matter of fact, isn't that funny? DSS doesn't really like me that much. Right. I think there's a dartboard with my face on it. They certainly have one. Might be right but, next to mine. <laughs> but three, three of them were, uh, three, three people, and I know because they, they gave me the amendment. Yeah. And they said, you know, they were, they were the ones that held out to make the caucus, you know, Excellent. come around and, right. and change. And, and, you know, those are the people that do that in silence. Correct. Mm. Are the ones that, you know, I most appreciate and I make sure, you know, I call them up and I thank them and very you know very important. I tell them, you know, very look, important. you guys need anything on, on, on my end, you know, I, I, I wanna be there for you because you know, I, I appreciate when people go ahead and do that. And I and being in the middle of it, I, I know what it takes when you do put yourself out there, and uh, we're very fortunate on our, on our issues. Yeah, we're, 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 we get a, we get across the board. We've been very we get a lot fortunate. of a lot of Republican yeah. support. We get yeah. a, a lot of Democratic right. support. Right. Um, Republicans are usually a bit more vocal in their right. support because they can be. Right. They're they're in a, in a minority situation, and and they can talk more in in, in that. Right. Uh, but it's the ones that silently. You know, go in and 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 do do the work, and you know we've had some. Well, so we've well had sec some second chance took. Uh, oh my God, I, I mean, took years. I, I mean, I mean that was a serious fight, not only a legal fight, and then and then dealing with the thing. I, I mean, because again, emotional and and stuff like that, and sure, you know, you know that was one of the toughest issues that I had dealt with in a long time, outside of probably the. Uh, the death penalty was probably the the most difficult, but and and we fought with that both here in Connecticut and in Massachusetts mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and, and and all out through New England. But very very hard. Those are emotional issues. Those are right. you, you know, and you got real people that are really hurting and they really believe. Right. You know, it's not an easy. Those are not easy issues. In fact, anything that you and I deal with, the, oh, are, are they're not they're not easy. You know, because we're talking human lives, 
Right. Uh, okay, and we're talking pain, and, right. and, and, and it, it's difficult. It's really difficult. And that's what makes it very difficult for the public sometimes to say, how could they be? How could they do How that? could they not support that? Yeah, right. How could they cut that? Yeah, exactly. You know, what's wrong? And the, the, the truth is, it, it's like the movies. It's like Sophie's Choice sometimes, certainly not that dramatic, but it is to the point of, of things that we know that if we cut that, there are people that are going to hurt. Hurt. Yeah. And um, yeah. but on the other end, true. But on this side, if you don't, there's another group <laughs> over here, mm -hmm. if you and don't we do don't it. have yeah. enough yeah. resources yeah. to do it unless you want to put up another billion dollars worth of taxes and go home to your constituents. You want to do that? I'm willing to do it if that's where the court, that's where the fighting starts. That's, that's where the real. You know, because it's all yeah. it always comes down to money, doesn't it? Yep. And uh, mm -hmm. I think all of us, you know, as human beings, if we, if we even if we're uh, very efficient and effective on the way we spend our dollars, and I think we all want to be. We don't want to waste money because every dollar wasted is a dollar we could have put to help somebody else uh, and make someone's life better or make someone's business better, depending on the perspective that you you look at the political realm. Um, but the caucuses are obviously as we talked about earlier, is where all the work is done, where all the fighting is done, where all the decisions are made. But we start early. And what we do is you set out, this was another thing that's very important. You have to set out, you know, I always, I guess because my sports background, I always looked at that as team, or team, this is the game plan. Mm -hmm. So we would have a game plan. And what I used to love about that, and I think we did very well with it, we would go off campus, and we uh, would have our easels with our you know, boards up there. And we would go around one legislator at a time, two days after the election. So actually, this should be the day that they should be meeting up the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And then we would say to each person, Father, when you were knocking on doors, what was the issue? And we have all our leaders, you know, assistant leaders and up at the board. Um, I was. They were talking to me about Plan B, this one of the ones, you know, the Plan B pill. Uh, I was told about the budget, jobs, yeah. um, dis disabilities, uh, whatever the issues were, mm -hmm. uh, gun issues, death penalty. And we would have our board, and we'd have all, each one would get up and tell them the top three things they heard. So now you start to form a little bit of a game plan. And then once the game plan is made, we took that information and we drafted it. Then we came about a week later as the leaders and presented it. And I remember we had uh, a blueprint for Connecticut's future healthcare. We had one about, um, it's funny, they use our, our name too, Energize Connecticut, that came from yeah, us, yeah, about exactly. energy and green. Right, right. Anyways, so we present and we'd have the boards, everything that they talked about, on these beautiful boards, and we actually gave them a clipboard with their game plan. And then I said, do we all agree that these are the things we're going to fight for this year? And everybody, the majority, says, yes, these are our priorities. Well, within th two months, They're people are bringing up issues, <laughs> and I bring them in once. I said, guys, where, where are you going? That was, that's our game plan. Show me where on our game plan, yes, that's yes. Well, you know, I yeah. talked to Ralph. <laughs> I talked to Ralph at the bar the other day. And Ralph said, oh, yeah. Ralph the lobbyist? No, yeah, Ralph the lobbyist. And the lobbyist says, OK, I said, well, listen, Ralph probably has a good point. But the bottom line is, that's not on the game plan. So you start with the game plan, you implement the game plan, keep them focused on the game plan. And at the end of the day, you have a product there that most people are happy with. Oh. Good evening. You're on Street Talk with Father Russ and his guest. Hey, Father Russ. Uh, good, good program, yeah. I, I, I do have one question for your guest. Could you speak up just a little bit? Sure. Can you hear me now? Uh, a little better. All right. I, I have one question for, for your guest. And, and, and as a, uh, uh, a voter and not a lobbyist, is it people first? Our party first. 
because me and my fellow taxpayers, we don't mind paying taxes as long as we get a return on our investment. And by that I mean it's like, let's pick something out of the hat. We've got the Amistad. Millions of tax dollars going to support a ship and a foundation, and there's no return on our investment. So they voted to give money to those type of programs when that money could have been diverted to the soup kitchen or social programs. And as taxpayers, that's where we start to say there's no difference between Republicans and Democrats and who's looking out for us. Because when it comes to election time, the average guy is besieged with, I need your vote, I'll take care of you. After the election is over and let's say whatever party gets the majority, that average guy who needs the curbs replaced in front of his house gets nothing. And we don't see another politician till the next election cycle. So I understand party politics. I understand it's a two-party system. But what happened to the average guy's representative? And I'll hang up and wait for an answer. That was a very, very excellent question. Very, Thank very you. Very good question. So, okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, he feels the frustration that most Americans feel right now. And quite frankly, it's funny now that I'm on shoes on the other foot. Right, right. It's funny that I also get frustrated also. Right, right. So I think we had a little conversation before the show. It is, is important on a local level and on a state level. You have more say as a constituent with those individuals than you do sometime our federal guys. Not saying that they're bad people or great people, whatever, but it's important that you as a constituent be in contact with your elected official. Yeah, I know we're busy. I know we got lives to leave, but it's so important to be able to pick up a phone and say, hey, Representative Amon, you know, what happened on that vote? What I'm Make here. them accountable. Yeah. And, and I, as we had said earlier before the show, even now that I'm out, the years I served, there were about a third of the legislature on both sides of the aisle that I felt the constant constituent work, right. worked hard all year round, right. wanted to make a difference. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of legislators, uh, not disrespecting them, it's part of human nature, um, they get complacent sometimes. But if your constituency makes you, doesn't challenge you, okay, or keep you on your toes, complacency does happen. Well, you, have a, that's a, you, you and I are talking the same thing. That's why I do what I do. That's why I have the organization that I do and that I push and that I have Dominic running around and getting people on this. There's a reason why we do this. I hear what you're asking. You support the soup kitchen. Somebody else supports the Amistad. Guess what? There's only a certain amount of money. If you want to get that money to the soup kitchen, you need to get out and get your people to the polls and vote because that's why they'll listen to you. People listen to me and Dominic. And, and, because you and speak up. Because I get votes out. Or I'll get you out of office. And that's the hammer. Okay? I get what I want because I make sure our people go to the polls. Michael Passero is the mayor of New London by three to one vote. Our people put him in there. Our people put, our people put him in several years ago when he went in and we followed him and we'll support him because he's on our issues and we love him. Okay? Now, anybody that doesn't like what he's doing, guess who they're gonna fight? They're gonna fight the constituency that we have, okay, to get because if we have Michael, Michael's got a plan, and that's the plan we want to implement. We want your blueprint. Well, there's two. There's, I mean, I can, I can almost hear the argument between that gentleman that just called okay. 
and the Amistad. And let me give you a little brief conversation. Someone would stand up in the caucus. Let's say it's a New Haven rep. Let's say it's a black Puerto Rican caucus member. They feel that that Amistad is part of history. Mm -hmm. It's good for tourism. If, you, if we spend the money here, they have all these expertise that will come out. There's going to be a million dollars brought in every year. As we all know, those are projections. Those are, those are decisions you have to make. Now, someone else says, hey, wait a minute. You know, I love the story of Amistad. I love that it was done right here at San Lutz, by yeah, the way. Yeah, right here. Right here. Yeah, exactly. uh, that, that set's still there. Those, those are wonderful things. But you know what? I hate to tell you, I can't support that. How do I go back to my constituency in Norwich, OK, that I have drug rehabilitation and problems over here, and neighborhoods that say they don't want any more of these places opening up in their place in their, in their hometowns, and we have crime, and we have, how can I go back and say, geez, I just spent $5 million on the Amistad? Because my constituents aren't going to understand that. So it is about lobbying, whether it be paid lobbyist, right. or constituent Good, lobby, right. or people saying, no, right. we can't do this. A prime example just happened over in Stratford. Stratford, they had that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there was this thing we, over we, we almost We almost had uh, a John on. Uh, he, oh, he, couldn't, he couldn't come on at the last <laughs> minute. Right. And then I went and dug in at the oh, other geez. side, and I found out was all that was going on. On the sewer stuff? Or, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. And I, I swear to God, I didn't bring it up because of you guys. There's a prime example. Now, the mayor of Mayor Harkins, a Republican, I serve with, with John. And I, and I always like John, quite frankly. Personally, not politically, but personally. But John felt that they wanted to sell a big asset in Stratford, yep. which was their sewer plant. I think around 63, $65 million asset. It's, it, I think it was, uh, it, 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 they had bonded left on it. They had 39 million right. bonded left. Correct. They were going to get 16 million. Right. Correct. Uh, from 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 the sale, and then they, they then uh, hey, New hey. Haven was going to pull. Correct. Take the bonding off their their books. So, in fairness to Mayor Arkins and his philosophies, he feels regionalism, um, selling an asset, having somebody else run it, take the cash, reinvest it into economic development. From his viewpoint, okay, I can see you, John. Mm -hmm. No, John. In his viewpoint, it's a business decision, it's an economic decision, it's a long-term decision, and it's the way of the future. That's what John's thinking. The other people say, wait a minute. First of all, most municipalities, if you talk to leaders, are not in the real estate business, number one. That's not your job. Number two, do you really think you want to sell off an asset like that from the community? And so the arguments from the other side were, this is crazy. This is insane. We lose control. Who knows who we're going to sell it to? Happen, right? What that guy you're talking about down the line? How do I know who okay. they are? Uh -huh. At least with here in the municipal, it's our old Yankee, it's our old Yankee thinking, yeah. right? right? It's ours. We can control it. I don't want Milford to tell me what to do. I don't want yeah. Bridgeport to tell me what to do. Yeah. Stay out of our business. So there's a prime example of, of two good arguments. There's economic sides to both, and people have to make decisions. But it comes down to persuasion. Yeah. It comes down to persuasion. I, I, I know my, my, my big one that's going to come all the way back around again, because I know uh, I fought against uh, them closing down a Milford Harbor side. Yes. yes. Um, and I saw that, you know, Board of Aldermen, and I, obviously I'm very involved with my aldermen and, and yes. the other people. And, um, you know, I, I saw that they bonded out, you know, for the roof and to, right. to invest the three and a half million. So I'm thinking, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 you don't realize now. That's, got, that's a bigger asset because now it's been all upgraded. So if somebody wants to come around and utilize that, then, you know, that's, that's going to be like another issue. So I'm already pre-planning that I have to start talking with Board of Ed members because I know it's five to five now. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll talk to both sides because I know one side supported, you know, uh, uh, 
Th not, this, not is, close this, this is what we're trying to show here, and we do on the show and TV, and, and even for the years that I've been on Street Talk, is you need to be involved and you need to be politically aware mm -hmm. of what's going on. If you want things, you need to get out there. You need to participate as a citizen. As simple as you want the people on, three votes. There's been, we have two people here. There's going to be a recount in New London for, for certain mm -hmm. people. Uh, there, there's a three-point spread between a Democrat and, and, and a Republican getting on the council. Well, didn't Groton and, have and, a tie vote? I, uh, they may have. For they may have. Or something. And, and, uh, Clinton. And, and, Clinton, sorry. Clinton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to yeah, so, so, I That's mean, amazing. it is so important. People don't realize. Right. When we're talking about a couple of votes, there's a couple of votes. Right. We started, when we started here, you know, in New mm. London 14 years ago, they said, well, you're crazy. Well, you got a TV show. I said, well, I'll show you how crazy I am. I'm going to develop 300 votes right away. I had that's figured, a block. Well, that's, that's a block. And I had figured out how much the voting population was, and I was doing the homeless, you know, ministry, the food thing, thing right? I said, I'll, I'll get 300 homeless and, and stuff like that, and I'll, they'll vote as a block, and I'll show you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go on public access because I used it in Boston. I said, and I'm going to tell people what we're doing. And I was told I was crazy. Well, you can't do that. Well, the very first election we affected, that 300 votes was enough to get somebody off and get another person. Uh, that's how close these elections right. were. So over the years, and now we, we know we're far more than 300 in, 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 New, in New London, but, but we try to show and explain to people, you've got to be involved. If you want something, if you're crying, you can cry all you want, mm -hmm. but if you're not registering voters, if you're not getting out there, if you're not telling people what your issues are, you ain't going to get nothing. Well, back to that old back sewer old thing with Strafford. The, sewer, the people stood up. They stood up. Yeah, they stood up, they fought, they said no, and they won. And they won. So it happens more so than I think we know when you get those sort of issues. And to that gentleman again about Amistad versus the soup kitchen, right. let's give another example of that. Because it is funny. I was involved in the whole Patriot. Uh, oh, the Hartford the stadium. thing. Yes. The stadium. I was <laughs> I very, remember that. very much involved in that. So let's go back to then, right? Even so though we, you were a Giants fan. Just, I even though I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> it was very difficult for me. Are you music? Are you over? Yeah. Are we over already? No. That's you. That's me. Yeah. I forgot to turn my phone off. Turn his we, phone off. Those are bad people. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. right. I shut mine off because my Jeez. daughter calls me in the middle of it. She knows when I'm on. It was a good song. She, 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 she tries to call me just to, you know, drive me crazy. You know, so we so. talk about this whole thing, right? right? Robert Kraft is looking for a place. Robert Kraft comes to Connecticut with his son. Very charming guy. Talks to all of us. I'm right in the middle of this battle. As you know, we're talking... Millions and millions and millions of dollars. However, we had just come off success of UConn, which was very controversial. Putting all that money into the university, billion, billion, UConn one billion, I think we called it at the time. But we saw that it was reaping benefits for the state. It was bringing revenue. For every dollar we were spending, there were dollars coming back. You look at what we did then, even though it was a very tough vote to spend that kind of money. That was successful. Right. Let's go that was, so we felt a little, I guess, cocky, cocky we're coming off yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, so we go now and Kraft is looking for a new home. And we were very close up to the last two weeks of getting Kraft to come to Connecticut. Now, a lot of people say Roland was being duped. Commissioner Ritter was being duped. They were not being duped. And I'll tell you, Mr. Kraft, was not trying to dupe us. It came to dollars and cents. And what happened was every action has a reaction. And their Massachusetts legislature went to a back room with their governors and said, are we going to let mm -hmm. this thing go to Connecticut? Yeah. And they said over our dead bodies, yeah. what do we need to do? And whatever they did, Mr. Kraft left us ready to sign a, sign a contract. And they gave them a sweeter deal. We were shocked. We were shocked. But let me tell you, I'll never forget it. 
We had a picture of Kraft on the front page of the Harvard Current and all of us standing in back, ready to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to bring the Patriots here. And it collapsed, as you know. But let's say, and it collapsed on our side too, because there's a lot of opposition from taxpayers. But let's say we won. We would have all looked like geniuses, Father. Oh, yeah? Because they won their Super Bowl. They, the they won the Super Bowl. We would have looked like geniuses. <laughs> you know right? what I did? I yeah. the Super Bowl. I bet against them. I don't care. <laughs> because yeah, everybody I mean, was very I, 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 yeah. I, I said I wanted them to win, so the only yeah. way they're going to win is for me to bet against them. They so, said, are you crazy? I said, no, if I bet on them, they're going to lose. I, I, don't think they, yeah. I, you know. I, will never, I will never forget it. We were up well, on look that. look at the casinos. Yeah, yeah. Talk about action of the talk about state politics Correct. versus state politics Correct. We, we, which we, we we know happens uh, uh, again uh, you, you you've got to go into a room and make a decision how are we going to expand the casinos in Connecticut Correct. over here uh, uh, and and try to make sure that our constituency stays here because guess what Massachusetts doing? Correct. They're going to put a casino up here, Correct. and their and and their intent is to bring the people that come down here back over there that want their dollars. And that that decision is has to be talked about, which with you do with a bunch of people that are pro and con, Correct. rather gam and of all things gambling. Gambling. Correct. Yeah, gambling. Morally, we got the moral conflicts of and, and with all those individuals that are sitting in that room. Right. Uh, I, I don't think a lot of people realize, you, you, you know, that it's a bunch of human beings that go into the back, they always said the back room deal. Well, guess what? Yeah, okay, you do have to do all the things that you talk about. You have to protect your family, mm -hmm. and that's who they are. You have to make them look good, and you have to ensure they're going to come back so that you can go forward with, with your blueprint right. as, as you see it uh, right. and, and as the guys that are there. It, it's, uh, you know, it make it seem like this is a nefarious situation, and it's not. I mean, we've had, we had people scolded. Uh, which I said several years ago that happened, that, that uh, not my party, but they scolded their person in public. And I went to their town committee person, I said, what's the matter with you? I said, this, this is your guy. He gets great votes. And guess what? You scolded him publicly. Yeah, I said, what are you, crazy? So you want to lose his vote? Of course, I talked him into going into the uh, uh, Democratic Party. He's now a Democrat, and he got the most votes for school, school, school board this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, I, I mean, uh, I, I mean, people, people, uh, you know, forget uh, really what 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 responsibility is put on you they, people. And they, they, you know, the back room. Discussion. There are backroom deals too. We can talk a little bit about, but I'm talking about the caucus. Yeah. Is why Don brought me here today. So when I go back to where we started with that, those seven things of disagreement in my caucus, with the Senate caucus, and those seven actually are 15 uh, that are not in favor of what the governor wants. So now you got to meet with the leadership, and you go, okay, let's let we talk, we talk, and we negotiate. So maybe I knock off two of them, three. I got to go back to my caucus. Say, guys, we won a few and we lost a few. And I explain, and the most, the most important thing you have to do as leader is make sure you're straight with your caucus. Yeah. The minute you BS them, the minute mm -hmm. you don't tell them the whole story, or they hear you double talking to the press, mm -hmm. you're, done. you're done. And those are leaders that don't last long. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that survive there are the ones that say, listen, here's what just happened, A, B, and C. Um, how we feel about it. Can we live with it now with these four things? Now maybe they got it down, okay, well let this one go this year. If you promise next year we can do it. Yeah. Now, now I'm down to two, I gotta go back and fight for those last two. But my job isn't to sell my caucus out. My job is just like you're my constituent, is to do the same damn thing. I go in that room with what my orders are yeah. from my caucus. From caucus. Now what? It's not the other way around. No, 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 no. So now I say, this is what my caucus no, wants. No, no. So that gentleman's point is, it isn't, remember, you have 151 different personalities. Yeah, exactly. And you need 76 votes yeah. out of those, I think it's 76, yeah, 76 votes 
uh, out of there to win. Yeah, exactly. And you need to make sure that when you get out there, you do know how many votes you have. Because yeah. there's nothing more embarrassing for a speaker to lose a vote. I've never lost a vote on the floor because you better know how to count. You better know how to and count. And the day you walk out there putting a bill up, you better not lose because that's embarrassing in your leadership and they'll take advantage your of you. Your leader has to go to the wall with right. you. And Correct. you've got to go to the wall with your leader. And right. that's what I can't believe. Is we, that we, we, one see minute? That, yeah, we're going to have to watch you. I'm going to have to go down. It's an hour show. It's an hour show. It's the hour fastest hour, hour on TV. You've got to be kidding me. That's the fastest hour. Jim, God bless you. It's great to see you again. You too. I enjoy it. You've got to come back. I want to talk about the movie. Yes, yes. I want to talk about the politics. We're doing one on human trafficking. Trafficking father on slavery. Uh, slavery, human yes. slavery. Yeah, we want to, yes. you know, you need to come back. It's a Dominic. Great, it's a crazy issue. You've been a great co host, obviously. You yeah, know, we got, we got, we're going into 2016. Yep. We're going to yep. have a Democrat in the White House. It's wearing skirts, and uh, I get for Trump. Get me and Trump here. It'll be fun. Oh, I, I put my hair just like. Well, you know Trump. Man. Yes, you, you've met him before. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. With his feet up on yeah, the desk. Yeah, feet up on the desk. You think he'd come here for us? You never know. <laughs> you know you never know. Crazy. You never know. God, God bless you out there. Thanks, I God. love you. Please, yeah. uh, all of you, please uh, pray for me. I'll pray for you. I need lots of prayers. Thank we you. love you. See you next week. Who next week, Dominic? Uh, we're, we're, we're working in between. We're, God, we're in between. Surprise guests. In between. Surprise guests.